Now, when we come to the muscle on the lateral side, we're gonna start with the tensor fascia lata, which is this muscle here, okay? It has a muscular proximal part and it has the facial distal, distal part. So this part here and this part here, both of these represent the tensor fascia lata. Let me separate it here from the cranial sartorius. So all this muscle here is the tensor fascia lata. It will gonna go with this fascia and insert on the patellar and the patellar ligament. This is the tensor fascia lata. If you look at its origin, it is coming from the tuber coxae. It's coming from the tuber coxae and it inserts on the lateral side of, of the femur and it will insert here at the patellar ligament. Now, if you want to look at the action of the tensor fascia lata, it tends to do what? It will tend to tense the lateral femoral fascia, okay? Uh, also, it flexes the hip joint because it is coming from the tuber uh, coxae. And because of its insertion here as the patellar ligament, it will extend the stifle joint. So the tensor fascia lata will act on the hip joint and also it will act on the stifle joint. It will flex the hip joint and it will extend the stifle joint. Now, the next one is this muscle here. Okay, this muscle here. And this is the superficial gluteal muscle. This is the superficial gluteal muscle. Because this is, we call this whole region here is the gluteal region. Now, the superficial gluteal originates from the lateral aspect of the sacrum and from the sacrotuberous ligament, that is a tendinous ligament, extends from the, between the sacrum and the ischiatic tuberosity. It will act as an origin for the superficial gluteal muscles and it will insert on the third, it will insert on the, uh, the, the, the superficial gluteal will insert on the third row counter of the, of the femur, okay? If we reflect the superficial gluteal muscle, this huge one here is the middle gluteal muscle. And the middle gluteal, it is coming from the ilium, and it go and insert on the greater true counter as well, okay? Now, the middle gluteal, if you transect it in the middle and you reflect both parts, okay, you are gonna be able to see uh, two parts here. This part, they call it the piriformis because it's piriform muscle, and this is part of the middle gluteal, so you can just call it middle gluteal, and this part here, okay, that is attached to the bone, that is the deep gluteal muscles. Now, I want to draw your attention once we are in this area here. If you transect the deep gluteal muscle, and reflect it here, you will see a tiny muscle that is just sitting at the top of the hip joint, joint capsule, and that is the articularis coxi muscle. It is this muscle here, I hope that you can see it. Let me try to, let me try to expose it more. So this is small, tiny muscle here that is sitting at the top of the hip joint, joint capsule is the articularis coxae. And this muscle, you can use it as a landmark when you come to access the uh, hip joint. 
So when you are doing the dissection, when you are retracting the muscles out of the way, when you reach at this level here and you see the articularis coxi, then you know that you are immediately at the top of the uh, hip joint capsule. So as soon as you cut this muscle and you cut the capsule, you are inside the, the hip joint. Now, these are the gluteal muscle, and the gluteal muscles are the major extensors of the hip joint because of their attachment and because of their of their of their origin. So we have superficial gluteal muscle, we have the middle gluteal muscle, which it is deep part or it is piriform part. We have the deep gluteal muscle, and when we reflect the deep gluteal muscle, that small muscle that we have seen is the articularis coxi muscle. Now, we, we're going to go to the rotators of, of the limb. And we're going to discuss mainly the outer rotator or the external rotators of the, of the hind. So the first one we, we're going to dissect is this muscle here. This one here, and this is the internal obturator muscle because it is sitting inside the pelvis. That's why they refer to it as internal obturator. And the internal obturator, okay, let me reflect the superficial gluteal. These are the gluteal artery. Okay. At this level here, you can see the tendon of the internal obturator going over this small muscle, we refer to it as the gemelli muscle. Let me clean more here. So this is the internal obturator. This is the tendon of insertion of the internal obturator going over the gemelli muscle, which is, has this part here and this part here. The gemelli also, it's an outer rotator of of the limb, it's a small muscle, it acts as a synergist to the outer rotator, so, and it is attached to the bone, and every time you have a muscle uh, attached to the bone, it doesn't do much in terms of uh, moving the joint, but uh, internal obturator here, and we said we call it internal obturator because it is sitting at the top of the obturator foramen from inside the pelvis, this is the tendon of insertion of the internal obturator going over the gemelli muscles. And we said both of these, these are an out rotator of the limb or an external rotator of the, uh, of the limb. Now, once we are here, okay, once we dealt with the internal obturator, okay, from the outside of the pelvis, and it, okay, let me show it to you over here. Uh, okay, so this is the internal obturator because it is sitting inside the pelvis, covering the obturator foramen. This is the internal obturator. This is the sacrotuberous ligament extended from the sacrum to the sciatic tuberosity. This represents the sacrotuberous ligament. It is absent in the cat. Cat don't have sacrotuberous ligament. Okay? The tendon of insertion of the internal obturator will come through here, so you can see. But this is the internal obturator. If you look from here, okay, the external obturator will be sitting here. So we reflect the external obturator. This is the obturator framing. Now you can see this is here is the internal obturator. Let me show it to you in another specimen again. This part here, this is the sacrotuberous ligament. Okay. This is the internal obturator. This is the tendon of the internal obturator going over the gemelli muscle. This is the gemelli muscle. If we're going to go to the inside there, if I flip this, so now what you see here, this is the external obturator. So you have 
internal obturator, and this is the external obturator. Uh, I hope this will clear it because uh, this creates a lot of confusion uh, with the students. Although the internal obturator, when you look at it, it, it seems like it is sitting out Size the pelvis, but actually it is it is inside um, the pelvis. Now let us go back and put everything together. Okay, and let us transect the tensor fascia lata. Okay, and the biceps to expose this muscle here. This is the vastus lateralis. And this is the first part of the quadriceps femoris. The quadriceps, this muscle consists of four bellies. Vastus lateralis, vastus medialis from the medial side, vastus intermediate in between the two and attached to the femur, and rectus femoris on the cranial side. This is the quadriceps femoris. This is the major extensor of the stifle joint. It is the quadriceps because it has four heads, vastus lateralis on the lateral side, rectus femoris on the cranial side, vastus intermediate on the medial side, and if we go in between the vastus lateralis and the vastus medialis, the one that you see here attached to the femur, this is the vastus intermediate. All together, they will form the quadriceps muscle that insert on the patellar ligament, okay? And this is the major muscle that extend the stifle joint. This is the major extensor of the stifle joint. Now, let me say a word or two regarding the rectus femoris. The, all these muscles, all the vastus lateralis, vastus intermediates, all of these, all of these, they originate, the, all of these, they originate from the femur, so they don't have any axis of the hip joint. The only exception is the rectus femoris, because it is coming from the ilium, that's why it acts on the hip joint and also it acts on the stifle joint. So out of the four heads of the quadriceps, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, vastus intermediates, and the rectus femoris, only the rectus femoris will act as the flexor of the hip joint beside its action as an extensor of the stifle joint, while the other three heads, vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, and vastus intermediates, those are mainly extensors of the stifle joint. They don't act on the hip joint, okay? Now, uh, this will bring us to the end of the thigh region. Uh, we're gonna continue with the, uh, uh, with the muscle that on the crew or the cruise or the leg, okay? Uh, thank you.